Welcome to History Briefing. The content of the briefing includes the history and meaning behind Women's History Month colors, Council to Resurrect Captain Cook statue toppled by vandals in St. Kilda, Rome's ancient grandeur towers anew with a copy of a colossus, China's stock market nightmare is nowhere near over, UFC Fight Night 236 pre event facts, Brad Tavares on verge of a Michael Bisping record, the history and meaning behind Women's History Month colors, Yahoo! March is Women's History Month in the U.S. The event began as a week of celebration and recognition in 1980 and expanded to a month in 1987. The event's colors of purple, green, white and gold each have their own symbolism. Green symbolizes hope, new beginnings and growth, while purple stands for justice, dignity and visionary thinking. The use of purple internationally as the color of women and gender equality is also significant. White represents purity and equality and has been associated with the women's rights movement since its origins. Gold, the fourth color, was adopted by U.S. suffragettes from their British counterparts. It was seen as a beacon of hope and was used alongside purple and white. The colors of Women's History Month have been selected to create a dynamic and balanced representation, according to Jennifer York, a doctoral candidate who leads the Wellness Design Division at Stephanie Parisi Studio. Council to Resurrect Captain Cook statue toppled by vandals in St. Kilda, ABC. A council in Melbourne has rejected a proposal for a community consultation process to decide the future of a Captain Cook statue that was vandalized in January. The statue, located in the suburb of St. Kilda, was cut down at the ankles, leaving only the boots on display. The council rejected the motion to hold a consultation, with the mayor citing a lack of clarity. The statue could be resurrected, but there are differing views among locals, with some suggesting it should be moved to another part of the city or replaced with something else. Rome's ancient grandeur towers anew with a copy of a colossus. New York Times. A 43-foot statue of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great has been reconstructed by a Madrid-based digital art group called Factum Foundation. The statue was recreated from 10 known fragments of the original sculpture and installed in a garden in Rome's Capitoline Museums. The head and most of the other fragments of the statue were discovered in 1486 and are now permanently on show at the museums. The Factum Foundation team used photogrammetry and 3D printing to recreate the statue, which was originally made for a 2022 exhibit at the Prada Foundation in Milan. China's stock market nightmare is nowhere near over. Economist. The economic prospects in China are currently gloomier than at any point in recent history, with the dire state of the property market being the chief problem. Prices and sales have fallen for over a year, and government rescue plans do not seem up to the task. This has led to a significant market rout, with over $1 trillion in market value wiped since the start of the year. Foreign investors have been net sellers for months, pulling out of Chinese markets due to the lack of confidence. The situation is worrying for Chinese leader Xi Jinping, as the market downturn reflects the perception of China and his leadership abroad. To stabilize the market, regulators have made statements about market stabilization and crackdowns on short selling. However, these announcements have made fund managers uneasy and caused foreign investors to withdraw from Chinese markets. Investors are also waiting for a state bailout fund, but so far, signs of the national team at work have not been sufficient to produce a serious turnaround in the markets. The central government may eventually step in with a bigger bailout package, but sweeping reforms to China's stock markets and how investors value companies are also being eyed by Xi. The plan is to shift the focus of China's markets from capital raising to helping investors preserve their wealth and to raise the market value of state-owned enterprises. However, investors are skeptical due to past experiences and are considering other options outside of China's stock markets. UFC Fight Night 236 Pre-Event Facts Brad Tavares on verge of a Michael Bisping record. Yahoo! UFC Fight Night 236 is scheduled to take place at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas and will be streamed on ESPN+. The event will feature middleweights Jack Hermanson and Joe Pfeiffer in a five-round bout. Hermanson will be returning to the Octagon for the first time since December 3, 2022. Who created Butter Chicken? India's Great Curry Clash. New York Times. Two families in India are in a legal battle over who invented Butter Chicken. The dish, which is a staple in North Indian cuisine, is believed to have been created in the late 1940s by one of two men who fled from Peshawar during the partition of British India. The families have gone to court to try to prove that their respective relative was the true inventor of the dish. The verdict could have financial implications for the families, as well as impact the legacy of the restaurant that the two men started. Caitlin Clark's potential record-breaking game versus Nebraska sees soaring ticket prices. Yahoo! 
Caitlin Clark is quickly approaching the NCAA Division I women's scoring record and there's a chance she passes Kelsey Plum on Sunday when Iowa visits Nebraska. Clark is averaging 32.4 points per game for the number two ranked Hawkeyes and she is currently at 3,462 career points, 65 behind Plum's 3,527. If she breaks the record on Sunday, it will be Cornhuskers fans who will be happy since they have been seeking out tickets, which means heading to secondary markets since Pinnacle Bank Arena is sold out. Ticket prices are spiking in anticipation. Rare centuries-old gold coin found by metal detectorist. Yahoo! A man using a metal detector discovered a centuries-old Dutch coin on the southern coast of Poland earlier this week, museum officials announced. The coin, a golden ducat, is from the Netherlands, according to a post on social media from the Museum of the History of the Kamienska Land. The coin is dated to the year 1777 and was found on the site of the oldest Dominican monastery along the southern coast of the Baltic Sea. Multilateralism and China's Hedging Strategy Diplomat Countries around the world are employing hedging strategies to navigate the evolving multipolarity and intense geopolitical competition between the US and China. Hedging involves a blend of trade agreements, military alliances, and strategic ambiguity, allowing nations to balance economic ties with China against security alliances with the US. This diplomatic approach enables countries to harness benefits from both sides without unwavering allegiance to either. The US and China themselves are also active players in this game of hedging, strengthening alliances and engaging in dialogue with rivals. China's hedging strategy has evolved over the years, allowing it to maximize advantages, cultivate diplomatic space, and protect its national interests. China has actively contributed to international institutions, while also establishing its own initiatives to hedge against potential fluctuations in the current international framework. The Belt and Road Initiative, the Global Development Initiative, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank are examples of China's strategic engagement. Hedging remains a vital strategy for nations as the global power structure continues to shift and new challenges emerge. A conversation with the history curator of the California African American Museum. New York Times. Black history in California has been largely overlooked and misunderstood, according to Susan D. Anderson, the history curator at the California African American Museum in Los Angeles. One reason for this oversight is the assumption that California, as a free state, did not have enslaved people or slaveholders. Additionally, academic historians have not given the West, including California, as much attention as the 13 colonies or the South. Anderson believes that black history in California deserves more recognition and understanding. Hey there, folks. It's your friendly neighborhood Six Doctor here, bringing you another round of fascinating news from across the multiverse. So, grab your cup of interdimensional coffee and let's dive right in. First up, we have Women's History Month, which is currently being celebrated in the U.S. Did you know that the colors associated with this month hold special meanings? Purple stands for justice and visionary thinking, green symbolizes hope and growth, white represents purity and equality, and gold was adopted from the British suffragettes as a beacon of hope. It's a dynamic and balanced representation, just like the incredible women it honors. In other news, a council in Melbourne is facing a dilemma after a Captain Cook statue was vandalized. The proposal for a community consultation process to decide its future was rejected, leaving locals divided on whether to resurrect it, move it elsewhere, or replace it with something new. Looks like the council has a tough decision to make. Meanwhile, in Rome, a digital art group has reconstructed a 43-foot statue of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. Using 10 known fragments of the original sculpture, they brought this ancient grandeur back to life. Talk about a blast from the past. Now, let's talk about China's stock market nightmare. The economic prospects in China are currently gloomy, with the property market being a major problem. The lack of confidence has led to a significant market rout, with over $1 trillion in market value wiped since the start of the year. Foreign investors are pulling out, and even statements about market stabilization and crackdowns on short selling are making fund managers uneasy. It's a tough situation for Chinese leader Xi Jinping and his leadership abroad. On a lighter note, UFC Fight Night 236 is set to take place in Las Vegas, featuring middleweights Jack Hermanson and Joe Pfeiffer. And in a clash of curries, two families in India are battling it out in court over who invented butter chicken. That's one spicy legal battle. In sports, Caitlin Clark is on the verge of breaking the NCAA Division I women's scoring record. Fans are scrambling to get tickets for Sunday's game, with prices soaring in anticipation. Looks like history is in the making. In a stroke of luck, a metal detectorist in Poland stumbled upon a centuries-old Dutch coin. Dating back to 1777, 
this treasure was found on the site of the oldest Dominican monastery along the southern coast of the Baltic Sea. Talk about striking gold. Moving on to geopolitics, countries worldwide are employing hedging strategies to navigate the intense competition between the US and China. This diplomatic approach allows nations to balance economic ties with China while maintaining security alliances with the US. It's like playing both sides of the field without committing to either team. Smart move, if you ask me. Lastly, we have a conversation with the history curator of the California African American Museum, who believes that black history in California deserves more recognition and understanding. It's time to shed light on this overlooked part of our past. And there you have it, my friends. Another whirlwind of news from across the multiverse. Now, it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on Women's History Month and its colors? Do you think the Captain Cook statue should be resurrected or replaced? And who do you think invented butter chicken? Let your voices be heard, and until next time, stay curious, stay adventurous, and keep exploring the infinite possibilities of our six-dimensional world. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website. 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.